Hey, it's Freeman here, and welcome back to Freeman's Garage. We're gonna tear down the suspension on the 56 Chevy. You've seen all the project videos on this car so far, right? So you know that if we put this Tri-5 out on the road right now the way it is, she'd be a rolling death trap. We'd be peanut butter on the pavement. What I'm trying to say is new front suspension parts are on the big brown truck as we speak. The very first thing we're going to do is spray everything down with lube. I'm talking everything on both sides. I kind of made a mess with this stuff because I lost the straw so it was misting and spraying all over the place uncontrollably. But I found the straw and now it's uh, very controllable. Alright, let's get all the brake stuff off each side, which it's all on there loose. It's just mocked up. And when we rebuilt it all, we'll get the steering detached and we'll bust these ball joints loose. And we'll get these coil springs out and A-arms will come off. Thank you for your cooperation. Where's the wrenches I brought over here? I thought I brought wrenches over here. Where did I put those things? Oh, they're on the Rambler. Actually, I need you back here. I'm gonna put your hardware back on you. So you don't boogie away. All right, so we'll use our tool from our drum brake tool set here to get these two springs off and then remove the shoe guide and then this backing plate and all this brake stuff will all come off together in one piece. Then we'll repeat the exact same thing over there and then we'll remove the front shocks and then we'll bust all the ball joints and pop these coil springs out. It's easy when you got the right tools and this shouldn't be in here tight. There you go. We're kind of messing up the beautiful paint job we did on this backing plate. Oh yeah, that's right. Just remembered, there's the original 1956 grease. Original, original 1956 grease on the end of that bolt. We don't want to ruin that, do we? Again, none of this brake stuff up front here is on super tight. It's all mocked up from when, from the videos where we rebuilt everything because I knew that we were going to be taking everything apart a few times. It'd be nice if we didn't have to take anything apart more than once, which we could do it that way, but I don't know, just kind of how I planned this one out.
There's a big glob of that original grease. Love it. Now it's time to bust these shocks out of here, which is probably not gonna go very smoothly. The challenge is not the fact that the shocks are inside the coil springs. That's not a big deal. The challenge is the rusty hardware, which is why we pre-soaked everything. There's two bolts on the bottom of each shock. And then just one nut up on top. And there's a lot more thread showing over here on the driver's side. That's interesting. We're going to use a 9 16 on this retainer and the nut. But up here, we're going to slip on a quarter inch wrench. And I did originally... Wow, I dropped that one too and it went out the door. I was going to say I originally grabbed a longer quarter inch wrench off of the pegboard above the toolbox, but I dropped it and it fell behind the toolbox and there's a whole bunch of engine hoist and stuff in front of the... T I can't. I, there's too much stuff in here. No, there's not too much stuff in here. I just need a bigger building. I would be willing to bet that we don't have a fat chance of this stuff coming apart. Are you serious? No way. How in the world is this even coming apart? really loosening and all I'm holding it with is this tiny little stubby no way I don't believe it that's a that's a true shocker right there of course it fell all the way over there I kind of don't even want to tell you this but I just looked outside for that wrench because that's where it fell the last time and I couldn't find it anywhere on the floor in this area and somehow it put itself right in here. How's that even possible? Let's see what happens with the actual nut now. You gotta be kidding me. Either that liquid wrench is just amazing or we've entered the twilight zone. I already had an extension cord run over here for the angle grinder. Expecting to have to just Cut this shock out of here. You see, the oil we sprayed on here is made in the USA. This wrench was forged in the USA. So was this one. And all of this was made in the USA. I think it's just, I think it's just a winning combination. Put that there so we can lose it. Possum on the gum bush. I'm a WD guy through and through, but for a while now, I've been playing around with the old liquid wrench, trusted since 1941, and they guaranteed that it would cut the rust. fan tastic and it even says it's made in the USA. Another tool for the arsenal. Now for the bottom two bolts, there's no nut. Well, there's a, a square nut. Looks like it's welded into the coil bucket. So we won't need a wrench or anything in here, just on the bottom. Let's see if we can bust it loose with just, just a regular sized wrench here. It looks like half inch, and it is. It feels like it wants to move. Yeah, it is moving a little. We'll grab a breaker bar though. We don't want to end up with stoop shoulder. All right, we got a good old American made six point socket on here. Craftsman, and then we got a GM Performance Parts breaker bar. <laughs> I don't know if they even make these anymore. I don't even know where I got it. I've probably bought it at a swap meet a long time ago. Oh yeah, it's coming out like nothing. All right, let's see how the second one goes. Beautiful. We could have shocks in here from the 70s. You never know, it could be a, this could be a pleasure ride. I'm just being kind of careful here. I don't want to strip out the, the threads and the control arm here. So we'll put a little bit more, a little bit more lube ski just to go easy on those threads. 
There we go. Got the other bolt out. The shock's about to fall out now. And here we are. A teeny tiny little shock that was in here. Super Ride Delco Products, Dayton, Ohio. It's like our wheel cylinders. Let's see if we can't find a year on this. Five 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 seven nine two zero. It's got oil in it. Forty one dash sixty four. And I think it says H dash. 20 or 201. Oh, it's pretty crusty. Oh, come on, don't tell me I got you stuck. There we go. She doesn't leak though. Oh, well, maybe. It's not a lot of travel. It's like brand new. We're gonna yank the passenger side shock out right now because I'm all excited now to find out what kind of shock it is. And we might have a little bit of a problem here. This little guy is slipping up top here. So we'll put a one size fits all on here. There we go. It's working like a charm. Uh oh. Oh, she's starting to kinda Strip out on this, go a little bit tighter. Yeah, okay, this might be an issue. All right, this doesn't want to come apart here in a minute. We're gonna have to ice this operation and just cut it off. This one here that looks like a porpoise has wider, flatter jaws. Try this one. Although it's got a shorter handle, so less less leverage. USA and an arrow pointing up and then there's a whole bunch of other stuff that I can't make out. Ooh, it smells good. This is all about to come off in just a second here. We're gonna remove that cotter key and this one down here that's hanging out in the shadows. And then we're gonna take the floor jack and we're gonna put it right under here. And we're gonna lift up on it just a little bit just to take some tension off all this hardware up here, including the hardware that's down here. It's holding all this together. Then we'll loosen everything up. We won't remove it, we'll just loosen it. And then we will bust the ball joints. Ooh, that's gonna be bleeding. Thank you, tie rod and cotter key.
We're about to loosen these nuts up from the bottom. Here's what they look like up on top. I need the power of gray skull. There we go. back the nuts off a little bit. That way when we separate the spindle from the ball joints, it doesn't take off like Parnelli Jones. It'll get caught on the nut that's hanging here. Won't be able to go any further. Let's lower the jack right now and see if when the spring pushes the upper and lower A-arms apart from each other, if it will separate the ball joints from the spindle. Namely, the upper ball joint. It probably won't, but it might, and if it doesn't, then we get to hit something with a hammer. All right, let me know if things start going catastrophically wrong. If they do and you don't say anything, it's your fault. And nothing happened, just as I suspected. I'm jacking it back up again because I just thought of a quick little demonstration. I can move it with my thumb. It's stiff, but I can move it. And now, let's lower it down. We actually had the whole car up off one of the off the uh, right front jack stand a little bit. Now that it's down, see, I can still move it, but I can't do it with a thumb. Since we got all this nice tension on it now, let's hit it with a hammer. All right, so now, here's where we jack it back up again. And take the tension off. And I'll take this nut up here off. And then, we'll let the thing down. Where's the three quarter inch wrench? Where are you? There you are, buddy. And then, yeah. <laughs> left. Uh, lefty loosey, ready tighty. And then what we'll do is we'll lower the jack down and we will let the coil spring fly out and break the camera. All right, here we go.
doing it very slowly. Oh, that spring actually does have some tension on it. Kind of makes me want to jack it back up again. I think we'll be fine. And that, my friends, is how it's done. This is unbelievable. This is as believable as a Mexican egg roll. This time I loosened up those four nuts down here a lot more than I did on the passenger side while the spring is still in and it looks like that tension is already separating things pretty good. So we'll see if this side comes out a lot easier than the passenger side did.
cool would that be if that was an arrowhead? Is it a height scraper? Looks more like somebody ran over mom's pottery in the yard. Pretty much a full day here. This stuff didn't come apart as easy as it looked like it did. I think next time we'll get all this stuff in the blast cabinet, get it cleaned up, painted, and prepped for the new bushings and ball joints coming in. I'm gonna send you to one of the videos on your screen and I'm gonna play with this dangerous spring and probably lose my two front teeth. <laughs>